Erev Tov, good evening dear women. Good evening dear women. We are just, we are just before Purim Besha Tova. I would like to bless us, Bezrat Hashem, Shagia Mashiach, Tzitkenu Bim Rabbi Amenu Amen, Shagia Mevasar Eliyahu, Anavi Eliyahu, Tishbi Eliyahu, Glidim Rabbi Mashiach, Nevi Eliyahu, Nevi Zachur Latov. We are going to start today, the whole lesson is going to be about Purim. We are going to start the lesson, everything is going to be about Purim, we are going to start with the halachot of the Jewish laws of Purim. First of all, please write yourself, it's very important, before Purim, give machatzita shekel to the synagogue. Go to your rabbi and give machatzita shekel. Every synagogue has a different amount for machatzita shekel. You have to ask and to give machatzita shekel, Bezrat Hashem. The husband bederch lezeh she gives. The machatzita shekel, yes, you remember we spoke about it Shabbat Shkalim on Shabbat Shkalim. That 30 days before the holiday of Passover, we speak about the shekels in order to bring machatzita shekel bishvil kamcha de pischa and for the chag. You re, today it's for kamcha de, de pischa, but then when the when the temple was built, shh, shh, when the temple was built, we gave the money in order to buy sacrifices for the temple for the altar. Okay. But today we give the money and then they do with it also Kimcha de Pischa. So please, dear women, don't forget before Purim to give Machatzita Shekel. Remind your husbands to go to the synagogue, to the rabbi, and to give Machatzita Shekel. Shh. You have to ask your rabbi in the shul and they will tell you exactly how much they take. Can. I mean, I understand it's better for... Can, it always can. You can give even if he doesn't give. You can give, it's like a present, matan beseter, you know, a present nobody knows about it and you're giving him schut and you're giving him yourself schut. You can give it on Wednesday, before Wednesday or even Wednesday night when it's Purim already. Usually it's between $8 to $11. That's what I saw in the synagogues. It, 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 ma? Between $8 to $11, it depends on the shul. Ken. Ken, Ken, Shabbat Shkalim. When I, you remember before we, we spoke about it on Shabbat Shkalim? So please, dear women, don't forget, this is very important. Another thing, Bezrat Hashem, this coming Wednesday, it's Tanit Esther, Tanit. You remember, it's not a, a sum of 24 hours, but it's a Tanit, it's from the morning, from sun, uh, sunrise to sundown. So this coming Wednesday, the Tanit starts at 4.44 a.m. By, by, the, by the calendar of Chabad, it's 4.44 a.m. to 6.27 p.m., dear women. When it finishes, all of us should go to the shul to listen to the Megillah. It's very important to hear, it's the Oraita, we have to listen to the Megillah. We have to listen to the Megillah, the Kriyat Megillah in the shul. Baal Korah reads it with a Tamim, the way that it's supposed to be read. And you know when we hear the name of Haman, you, we make noises and the children love it. So everybody gathers in the shul, Bezrat Hashem, and listens to the Megillah. We listen twice to the Megillah. One is after the Tzom, after the fast which means Wednesday night, and then we listen in the morning, Thursday morning, we also go to listen to the Megillah, dear women. If it's very hard, your husbands can read it for you at home if you have babies and you cannot go and there's a problem, so somebody can read it for you at home. If there's sick people, it's a big mitzvah, that they will be, come uh, even f um, from the shul, if a, a rabbi or someone who knows how to read from the Megillah, will come to that person's house and read from the Megillah for him that he can listen and do and be, be part of the mitzvah. It's a big mitzvah and you'll see a lot of people do that. Talmidei Chachamim, scholars who know how to read in the Torah, they go to 
uh, hospitals and places that people are sick and they read for them from the Megillah. It's a big mitzvah, dear women. Okay, so first of all, this is part of the Dinei Purim, the Jewish laws of Purim. I want you to know, shh, that Purim, part of the mitzvot of Purim, the um, Jewish laws of Purim, it's mitzvot de Rabbanan, shazman geraman. And you remember that I told you that women are pturot, women do not have to do the mitzvot that the zman geraman, which means they have a time. Mitzvah that have a time, a specific time. But this mitzvah we have to participate and to listen to the Megillah twice too because the whole miracle was about Esther Amalka, Esther the Queen, and she was a woman. So we have to be part of it, dear women. Uh, don't forget, dear women, that Purim, that Purim is on Yudaled and Tetvav. Dear women, the 14th and the 15th of the month of Adar of the Jewish month of Adar, dear women. Lama? Ki pa shmona peamim kara Yaakov avinu le-esav Adoni. Ma'achar vu kara no al-Kadosh Baruch Hu amar lo midak keneged midak alufim shelo yitzu lifna alufim shelcha. Shav nashim ekaot, ntel lechem rak midavar achoron, ketuv kacha. Ve'et sara... Translate. Oh, oh, sorry. Sorry. Oh, sorry. It's written in Ba'em. It's written in Ba'eshit, over there. It's written that because Yaakov Avinu called Esav eight times master, mm-hmm. and he shouldn't have called him master, Yaakov because he, yes, when yeah. he, he was afraid that he would fight him, when he, right. wanted, he wanted peace. Mm-hmm. So he called him eight times master. God said, because you did that, eight kings from him will be before the kings will come from you. So you see over there, there's a Perut, the, the Torah, it gives all of the names of the children and all of the kings of, of, of Edom, you see over there, the Bereshit, open over there, you'll find them. But, but was not looking, I don't understand why, he said, so he said Adoni? Ken. Okay, but he's... he's Adoni Asav. But, but he's faithful, Hashem, uh, is faithful to Hashem. It doesn't, so Yaakov, he, he did Adon. not mean, in all, he wanted to prevent war. It's like when Abraham Avinu came to Ephron in order to buy the cave, Marat HaMachpela, okay? Yeah, right. the, the double cave. So what did he do? He bowed to him. Mm-hmm. Why did he, in, in, these are ways of peace. He did not so, mean but, but, it's yeah. out of it's honor. Diplomatic because it can, diplomatic approach. Okay. Why? Okay. Because it's, it, well, first of all, he's his brother. He is he he's his brother. Okay, don't forget that he's his brother. Yeah, older brother. Too. Twin brother. No, no, now Yaakov is the older one because he sold him the first of all. <laughs> but anyway, he's, anyway, I gave you a lesson about it because truly Yaakov was the first one. Why was Hashem angry? Why would he send eight kings? Because of Midaki. Do you understand that everything? Because he said something that. Ishar Koach. Ishar Koach. Did you hear what you said? We need to have confidence in God that everything. But it's not, the confidence sh- should be also uh, impressed in words, the milim. Because for every word that we take out, God remains, because I told you that the whole world, God bless you, the whole world, Purim Sameach, the whole world is created by words. The words are still around us. All of the, when I say a prosperity, a cube of prosperity, I, what do I mean truly? A tube of austerity is words that come down to us. Good words, Hebrew words, holy words, they come to us. And only if we do bad things, that they switch places, the letters inside the word, and because of that, bad things, God forbid, happen to us. But if we were good, all the good words that come from heaven will come to us. There's no problem. It depends on us. So even for a word, you understand? You remember... Uh, you remember when Yaakov Avinu, I gave you, when we spoke about Rachel, Rachel, you remember? I told you over there that Yaakov, she comes to me and she says, please pray for me for a son because otherwise I will die. And he is angry with her and he says, Atachat Elohim Anochi? And he tells her, do you think that I'm instead of Hashem? Of God? Yeah. And God tells him, how could you speak yeah. like this to a woman? A woman desperate yeah. like her. Yeah. So he said, one of your sons will answer back to the other sons exactly the same words because it's measure for measure. And Yosef tells his brothers, when they are afraid after they buried Yaakov, he tells them, exactly the same words. When Rivka comes and sees and she falls from the camel and she sees Yitzchak 
and she sees the cloud of, of, of judgment around him. She feels the judgment. She falls from the, the camel. So she said, Halaze, she says, Halaze. This word, Halaze, which means this is Yitzchak, but it's a special word in Hebrew. So God says, You use this word, his sons are going to use it for your sons. So when the, the brothers of your sex sees him, they, they see him. They say to Halaze, this is a Halaze, which means they speak to him in, a, in the same word, because this is measure for measure. The world is, it, this is the balance in the world, exactly, even with the words. That's why we should close our mouth. We shouldn't speak a lot. We shouldn't, I told you, cell phones, phones, as minimum as possible, because usually this is the beginning of slandering. When you, when you are in a group of women, Holy things say, do not speak more than that because then otherwise we we slide into slandering. And God takes every word God forbid and gives us the same amash on the same level with the same meaning that we meant the, on the time that we said the word. This is how the world is created, measure for measure. It's, an, it's a, the same thing, thought. Yes, yes, exactly. You receive the same with the thoughts because... In heaven, the judgment is true. There's no mercy, there's judgment. And the judgment is true. You cannot say, well, I didn't mean it. There's no, I didn't mean it. We know exactly what you meant when you said that. You understand? You cannot hide. That's why, that's why you're studying Tomot Boa. We cannot hide. And when you will finish the Glinet of Ezrat Hashem and Sadat Ishmael to study Tomot Boa, you'll understand everything that I'm saying now totally. <laughs> But now I'll give you this. It's written, So write this sentence, and then I'll translate it. It's time, look, it's written, and et means time. It's a time of trouble for Yaakov. But from this time of trouble, he will be he will uh, have he will be saved. He will have salvation. Look at the world, Benimena. Okay. Benimehaman. You see the word Haman? You see Benimena? <laughs> what does it mean? It's for it's for it's for eternity, dear women. God, Chavas Shelo Samti Zat Oh, אז אני לא שמתי את זה עלייך, תודה, לא יודעת, לא נורא, זה כן. So it means, look, it, on the time of trouble for Jacob. Why Jacob and not Israel? Because it means that we have less merit. We are named after Jacob when we do not remember who we are. That we are the daughters of a king and the sons of a king, dear women. When we remember that and we practice it, then we are Israel. So this is the time of trouble for Yaakov, and this is right this time. Which means from Haman. We are going to be, and who is Haman? The descendant of Amalek. So we are going to be saved from the nation and Amalek. Amen. God bless all of you. How beautiful is the Torah that God gave us. Okay, I forgot to tell you that this Shabbat is Prashat Kitisa. It's the, the sin of the golden calf. So, dear women, go to TorahAnytime.com and watch over the lectures that I gave you about Prashat Kitisa, dear women. Also, I gave a lot of lectures about Purim. Some of them were about the Steramal Kalastia, if you remember. Eli Eli, you remember that we spoke about it? The chapter uh, 22, the psalm of King David, the psalms of King Etilim. So dear women, watch also in Tor on, on TorahAnytime.com, watch all the lessons that I gave also for Purim and the month of Adar. But I would like to remind you that Purim was, is in the on the 14th and 15th of Adar, the Jewish month of Adar. Adar means, look, Aleph, which means Alufo Shel Olam, Dar. It means that Alufo Shel Olam, Dar among us. Dar in Hebrew means lives among us, which means God is now among us. Mamash, close to the Shekhinah, is close to us. On the month of the Adar, God is traveling around. He's all around us. Dear women, this is the time to pray to Hashem and to get closer to Him 
and ask for Mashiach Bezrat Hashem. Shege bi mera b'amenu, Amen. Ask that Mashiach will come and God Bezrat Hashem with mercy will bring Mashiach. So this is the time because this is Adar, Aleph, Dar. And you know, it's written on, at the end of Parashat Beshalach. Let's concentrate. It's written at the end of Parashat Beshalach. You remember that when the children of Israel went out of Egypt, Amalek, was running after them and trying to kill them. Which ones did they kill? Which ones did they harm? The ones that were outside the cloud, that left the whole Jewish people, that not, was, were not united with the Jewish people. So, Beizanev Amalek, which means he came after the tail of the, Jewish, of the Jewish people. The ones that took themselves out of the Jewish people. They were not part of the, cl of, of the uh, cloud of Hashem. So, dear women, and it's written over there that the name of God and the throne of God is not complete because of Amalek. And at the, eventually it says the Zohar Kadosh that the war against Amalek will be harder and harsher than the war of Magog, Gog and Magog. Do you understand? It will be much tougher. Why? Because Amalek is the 50th gate of impurity. So it's written, Kiyad al Kesia milchamal Hashem ba'amalek midor dor. Dor from generation to generation. Dor dor is like dar. You see, it's the same thing. Daled, daled, reish. And why did God use these words from generation to generation? Dor dor. Because Amalek wants us to change the daled, the Hebrew letter daled, with the Hebrew letter reish. Because when we say Shema Yisroel, Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad, we say Echad, look, pay attention. So Amalek wants us to say instead of the Dalet Chas Shalom, Reish. Then we, it's like you say a, di a different God, because Acher in Hebrew is different. So Amalek wants us to change between the Dalet and the Reish, God forbid. So this is Mamash Chilul Hashem. And Amalek wants us to do that. How does he do that? We're going to speak, Bezrat Hashem, during the lecture on Purim itself. But meanwhile, let's continue. But have it in mind. Dar, I'm sorry. Aleph is Alufei Olam, Dar. Okay, dar is Gar. Gar lives among, the, among us. God comes among us on the month of Adar. It's beautiful, dear women. And the month of Adar, its constellation is Dagim. Okay? Spices. Okay? Fish, the constellation of spices. Ken. And exactly it's the Jewish people because the Jewish people are symbolized by fish. Because the fish live under the water, okay? Beneath the water, inside the water. The fish live inside the water. Nobody, no eye, there's no eye that can see them. It, just like that is the Jewish people. We live in communities and we keep our religion and our customs and everything together. The, the going, the nations do not understand what we do, dear women. The fish, mitrabim, uh, uh, the fish um, multiply and they multiply a lot. Also the Jewish people look at the holic after the Holocaust. Baruch Hashem, look at us today. So God helps us to multiply even though it's against all odds. Even though we have enemies all over, God helps us. And the fish, even if a little drop of water comes on the water, shh, a little drop of water, dear women, still the fish want more water. This water symbolizes the Torah, which means a person who is thirsty, spiritual thirstiness, wants water. The water is the Torah. So Jewish people, even though they study every year the Torah, Every day, every week, every month, every year, still we want to learn more. And every drop of Torah that we listen and we hear, every word, every letter, it's like a drop of water for us. It revives us. It revives our soul and we can feel it that it revives us, dear women. So that's for, the, that's for this, for, for now, we'll continue later. But let's finish, let's finish the Jewish laws. Dine Purim. We go to Sudat Purim. We have to have Sudat, a meal of Purim. It's a mitzvah. And it's a, it's a halacha. It's a Jewish law. We have to derabanan. Sudat Purim, dear women, usually the Suda is the, the one that we do the next day. We eat, of course, after Kriyata Megillah, we have a small Suda. But the main Suda is the one that we do the day after the Ta'anit. It's the, the, in the day of Purim. 
אוקיי, דיו ווימן? סליחה? לא, יום רביעי בלילה זה קריאת המגילה, יציאת הצום, קריאת המגילה, ואז זו סעודה קטנה של פורים. You know, it's bad. בדרך כלל בטח, חוגגים בבשרי. Dear women, after the, after the fast, we, have, we go to the shul, we listen to the Megillah. There are three blessings, okay, for the Megillah. One, we bless for, the, for hearing the Megillah. The second one, we bless for the miracles. And the third blessing is Shechayanu. The next day in the morning, we listen again to the Megillah. And dear women, when we listen again in the morning, again we have Shechianu in the morning. I would like to explain to you, when we do Shechianu, we should think, when we say Amen, because we do not say that, the Baal Kore says that, the one who reads from the Megillah. But then he says Shechianu, we do not, we are not allowed to say, when he says Baruch Atah Hashem, we do not say Baruch Hu Baruch Shmo. Why? Because Ke'onek Im Barech. Onek Im Barech, which means this is the law, we listen, and if we concentrate on what he says, it's like we blessed when we answer Amen. And I told you, the, he who answers Amen has a higher uh, virtue, a higher merit than the, the one that blesses, because he who answers Amen mentions the two names of God, and the one that blesses mentions only one name of God. So, dear women, when we say that in the morning, when we hear the Megillah, we need to concentrate, Bezrat Hashem, to take off also Bashechayanu, the Sudat Purim, and also Matanot Laevionim, presents for poor people, and Mishloach Manot, and gifts to other people, okay? You have to, because it, we do it once a year on Purim, so when we do something once a year, we say Shechayanu. But when you say Amen for the reading of the, the uh, Megillah, then if you concentrate all over those mitzvot too, it's part of it. You don't have to say Shechianu anymore, okay? It's part of reading the Megillah. But why we say it twice? If we say it um, t- uh, Wednesday night, why we say it again? This, uh, this is the halacha. You have to say it twice. Like you say when you light the candles, when you have two days of Chagim, you say twice the Shechianu. Okay? It's the same thing. Okay, let's continue. Sudat Purim, don't forget, you have to have a Sudat Purim. Now we go to Mishloach Manot and Matanot Laevionim. Dear women, sometimes it happens, sh- I will read you a few laws about Mishloach Manot and Matanot Laevionim. Chayav kol adam lishloach lechol apachot laadam echad shtei manot. Which means a person has to give one gift, even for one, at least one gift to one person that has two kinds of food. Okay? Lama, look... Because Mishloach in Hebrew, Be'yachid, Tisnaklu Mishloach, Yachid. It's, it's in a singular form, okay? Brucha ba. Mishloach is in a singular form, okay? Which means one gift and manot, manot is in a par- plural, nechon? Okay. Pl- plural form is rabim. Okay. Mana is Yachid in Hebrew, singular. But manot means in many, so at least two things should be there. Either it will be wine and something that you say mezonot, ozen aman or something. It has to be two things in the mishloach manot. Two things that are already ready to eat, not two things that you have to bake or cook. It has to be already ready just to eat it and enjoy it, okay? So this is the said It's written And he who sends as much as he can has a big merit because you're making people happy. You know, and, and the gift of giving is making people and you know why oh Buchaba, welcome. <laughs> Amen. Dear women. So you are making people happy. Kachol shemavim yoter mishlochem manot harei ze meshubach, and it's written larbot bematanot leivonim milarbot besudato bemishloch manot lerim. Ki ein simcha gedolah mefer tifnei kadosh baruchu ella lesameach levanim vitamim balmanot. There's no happiness in front of Hashem like making widows. Uh, divorced women, especially people who do not have support, making them happy. By giving them mishloach manot and making them happy, Baruch Hashem, we make a big mitzvah, dear women. We make Hashem happy because then it means that we have mercy, just like we studied in Tomer Dvorah, we have mercy over Hashem's creation, other people, you know, 
I, I, al I always tell you this, I don't know how much we do understand this, but we look different, we look as individuals, but truly when we take this klipa, this shh, when we take the shell off of us, we will see that we are all part of one soul, one body. We are all connected. So if one is happy, this happiness comes also to us, to our, it touches our soul. Dear women, if a person is sad, it touches also our soul. We are all part of one being, all of us, even though we look different, because each and every one of us came to, ch to fix something else. So God is happy when we make other people happy. Dear women, we should, and you know what? And it's more than that, because you remember in the Megillah, so in the Megillah over there, when Haman comes to Achashverosh, he says, there's a, 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 a nation, a people, he says, that are mefuzar meforad, that they are separated and they're everywhere and yeah. separated yeah. and scattered everywhere, he says. So he tells Achashverosh, the Jewish people are not together, are not united, they are separated. On Purim, we are together. That's why we fast. And after that, we come to the shul and read the Megillah together because everything on, of Pur, all the essence of Purim is being united. It's being part of one nation, part of one people, not separated. Because you, you understand that if something happen, bad happens to the Jewish nations, it happens to all of us. And it, is, it does not matter if we are in Israel or we're in Europe or in the United States or in Brazil or somewhere else. It does not matter. We are all one people. So it touches each and every one of us wherever we are. So dear women, this is part of the halachot. And it's written, Lo nika manot ela davar sheraui lechol kemot shu bli tikkun, which means again, you have to bring something that you can immediately eat. If either it's fish, it's meat, uh, it should be also mine um, metika, you know, um, candy and sweets like uh, uh, things like this, wine, even dvash, uh, honey, everything that you can eat immediately. It says, כל אדם אפילו אני שבישראל המקבל צדקה חייב ליתן לכל הפחות שתי מתנות לשני אנים. He says, every person, even a poor person, has to give משלוח מנות ומתנות לאביונים. Has to give it. When I speak about משלוח מנות, I told you even one gift that has two kinds of food inside is משלוח מנות. You, you did the mitzvah. But regarding מתנות לאביונים, you have to give to a few people because it's מתנות, it's gifts. In plural, okay? So you have to give it to a few people, not only one, a few people. Then you did the mitzvah. So let's continue. It says, Even women, they have a commandment that they have to give mishloach manot and presents to, uh, to the poor people. Money, present, or even food. Now, I would like to tell you, women sometimes think, my husband gives, it's okay, so I'm, I'm part of the mitzvah. It's not true. Not by halacha. A woman should bring to another woman and the man should bring to another man. If you give as a family, this is a different thing. If you give money, if a man gives a woman that he knows that she's a widow or a divorced woman and, he, a woman and gives her money, that's okay. A man can give it to a woman and a woman to a man also if it's money. Okay? Okay? It's, it's written, Some of the women say that my husband does it, so I don't need to do it. It's not true. You have to do it on your own. You have to give a mishloach manot to one person. So you give it to another woman. At least one person, you give it to another. You have to do the mitzvah. I told you. Even though this is a, the, all these mitzvot is the Rabbanan, and the Rabbanan is the Zman, Zman Geraman, we women are part of these mitzvot because Esther Amalka, the, the miracle was by Esther Amalka, by the Queen Esther, and she was a woman. So we are part of it and we have to participate and do it. We have to We have to be happy to eat and be happy on Purim. And why? Because all the essence, all the meaning of Purim, Bezrat Hashem, is that they wanted to kill the Jewish people in 127 nations. And the uh, mamash physically to kill us. I have a question. If you do this uh, gift for the family, it's, it's, it's also mishlachna. It does count. Betach. 
Betach, if you give it to cousins and your family and your father and mother, it's also Mishloch Manu. Yes. Zepat Ma Mitzvah. It's written that we need to be happy because we need to eat and be happy and to drink because everything that is, we need to enjoy the physical things in this world with a blessing. Why? Because physically they wanted to kill us. So midah can neged midah, measure for measure. So we show the, the whole world that nobody can get rid of the Jewish people. Baruch Hashem. God said and gave us a promise. Shh. God gave us a promise that He's going to keep the Jewish people. This is how we show Amalek, wherever they are, all of the nations that think that they can get rid of the Jewish people. And this is how we show also Iran and all the other nations who, ha who, had, who have a f thought of getting rid of the Jewish people. We are here and we're going to stay here because, because of the Jewish people the whole <coughs> world exists. Because of the Torah of the Jewish people, the whole world exists. And the nation should accept it because we are all part of one family. All of us began from Adam and Chava, the first human being, and his wife, Chava, Eve. So it's even ridiculous to have fights over it. The God that created the whole world, that is the owner of the vineyard, chose the Jewish people to be his firstborns. And this is the reality. Nobody can change it. Only God Himself can change it. And God gave a promise, and His promise is for e eternity, because God is not a human being. So His promise is for eternity. God is going to keep the, Jew the Jewish people, Bezrat Hashem. Amen. Amen. And it says, Kevan Shekola and because of the miracle was by wine, because of a wine. Vashti nitreda b'mishteh hayayin, which means Vashti was killed because of the feast of the, the wine. And then Veba Esther b'mkoma, and Esther came instead of her. Ve'inyan ha'aman v'mapalato hayal edi hayayin, which means even Haman, I'm reading you from Shulchan, uh, Kitzur Shulchan Aruch, that's part of the halachot, the Jewish laws. So even Haman, his failure and his death came because of a fast with the wine. You remember he fell on her bed? And this was his end, dear women. <laughs> and it says, That's why our sages, our sages said to us that we have to drink wine. It means that we have to drink wine until we do not know the difference between cursed be Haman and, and blessed be Mordechai, dear women. So you have to understand the wine, we have to drink wine, but you also have to be still um, aware of, of if you need to bless, if you need to pray, you have to be still uh, in awareness. So it's not that you're going to drink wine until you lose any sight of what's going on with you and you throw up, because even the halacha, the halacha said, וכן מי שיודע בעצמו שעל ידי כן יזלזל חס ושלום באיזה מצווה, which means if you become drunk, and then you cannot do a mitzvah, and you cannot bless, and you cannot say bracha achrona, or, or, and you cannot do anything, or because of that he won't know what's going on around him, and he can do something silly. It's better that he will not become drunk, you understand? This is from the Kitsur Shulchan Aruch, dear women. At least that all of what he does will be for the sake of heaven. So dear women, you should drink a little bit more than you usually drink. That's what, that's what it means, not to get in a state that you can, you'll throw up and you cannot, do, you know, you'll do your, you know, your things in, in your pants or something, God forbid. You are not allowed, Ken, I want to tell you, and God forbid, it, it should be, you should drink more than you usually drink, but in, in awareness, not in a state that you're not aware of what happen, happens around you. יותר ממה שהן שותות, אז אם את שותה רק כוס של קידוש, טיפה יותר מזה, לא יותר מזה. בטח שלא, כי נשים שלא ישתתו ליד גברים או ליד הבעלים שלהם, חס וחלילה. יותר טוב נשים שישבו לחוד. בטח יושבים לחוד. לא שישתכרו, לחוד, שבעלים לא גאו. לא צריכים להשתכר. Dear women, again, do not get drunk in a way that you are not aware of what's going on around you. It's even... Bet'ach, it's even, it's even by halacha, dear women. 
Lord Kedai Kach, that you know, because you have to say after the Suda, you have to say also Bracha Chrona, and you, God forbid, you're not allowed to say it if you're drunk and you're not aware what you're saying, the name of God in your mouth. So you have to be aware of, uh, of yourself. <laughs> it says, En la sot melacha be Purim. It says you should not work, do any work on Purim. Dear women, it says if, if you work on Purim, you do not have blessing on it. But, but if you have to work in order to support your family, shh, it says, shh, if you have to work, if you have a business, you have to do a few things, it says, and you can, you can consider your business as a, a source of joy. If it's a source of joy, if you are, if you are in a kavana, it's important those things. If you have a kavana that your business is a source of joy, then you're allowed to do it. Don't uh, exaggerate, but do what you need to do on that day, you do understand? But if you take it as a source of joy, then it's okay because it's Purim. And, do, if, and if, it's, if it's necessary, you know, which means that you have, you have to work because then you, you, won't, you can't support your family. So then think of it as something of joy that you do in Purim. And if you can cut the hours or do something, do it please, dear women, okay? Because on Purim you shouldn't work. You should be very happy with the blessing that God gave us on that day, Bezat Hashem. The 15th of Purim... The Tetvav be Purim is called Shushan Purim, dear women. Shushan Purim. It's called by Shushan Abira, the capital, okay, of Paras. Of Paras over there, of Persia, that, in those times. So Shushan was the capital. Why is it called Shushan Purim? Because the Jewish people, when they received the decree that they can fight the enemies, they fought the enemies on the 13th, Yud Gimel, Yud Gimel on the 13th, shh, on the 13th of the month of Adar. And on the 14th, they rested. So Purim is on the 14th for the cities that do not have walls around it, Chomot. Baprazim, the cities of the Prazim, on the 14th they celebrate Purim. But the cities that have walls around it, like Jerusalem and all the cities that used to have walls also, in the days of Yoshua, you remember Yoshua Binun? We spoke about it in, uh, in the dinner. So, Yoshua uh, Binun, on the days that he conquered the, the Israel, the land of Israel, that day is the cities that had walls around it, they also celebrate it on Shushan Purim. And what we do usually, we have two days of Purim. We have, it will be this year on, on Thursday and on Friday, Besrat Hashem. And Wednesday is the fast of Purim Tanit Esther. Those days, dear women, those days, dear women, you remember that the Queen Esther, she asked for the, from the Jewish people that they will fast for three days. She fasted for, you know, it's almost unimaginable. One day, when we do that on Yom Kippur, and when we do on Tisha B'Av, the 9th of Av, how, how do we look after we finish the, how do we look after the, we finish the fast of 24 hours? Think, three days, dear women. How many hours is three days? 72. 72. Why, why did she do that? Ein bet, 72, Ein bet. She wanted chesed. Chesed, she wanted that the name of God of mercy will be upon the children of Israel in order to take off the decree. That's why she said three days. Why? Kichet, in numerical value, is eight. Samich is 60. Dalit is four. Together it's 72, dear women. So she wanted the name of God that has mercy in it in order that God will change the decree, dear women. That's why it was three days. And you know, we cannot fast today three days, and our sages decided of one fast that starts in sunrise and, and finishes at sundown, dear women. It starts at 4.44 a.m. and ends at 6.27 p.m., and then we go to the shul to hear the Megillah. After that, we celebrate and have fun and eat, Bezat Hashem, from the Suda. Now, dear women, let's go back to our things. <laughs> I would like to tell you... How did, how did Haman Arasha, the wicked Haman, 
How did he cause the Jewish people? You have to concentrate. It's a beautiful story. And every year I give you a different uh, pan, a different face of Purim, you know, from a different side. Last year I gave you about the Queen Esther. I loved that lecture. I have to tell you. Eli Eli Lama Zaftani. It was a, a strong lecture. <laughs> so I would like to tell you now, dear women, what happened? What did Haman Rasha do? Why do I want to let you know that? Because look, today the same thing happens with us and the Arab nations. Exactly. You cannot believe it because it's, nothing changes in history. And... כן, אבל לא עוד מעט אני אדבר על זה. לא על זה, אבל אני אדבר על משהו אחר. משהו שכתוב, תזכיר, תזכיר לי אותיות המן. טוב, תזכיר לי נשמה. כי יש לי עוד מעט משהו להגיד, להראות על זה. אבל קודם הסיפור. Dear women, I would like to continue. So I would like to show you how King Solomon says, אין חדש תחת השמש. There's nothing new under the sun. History repeats itself. Why? Because we have short memory. Dear women, we have short memory, and it's more than short memory. We do not know our history. To tell you the truth, we do not know it. If we knew our Torah, our oral Torah and written Torah like we should know it, we would be aware of what's, what, what's happening around us. You know what? Mashiach would have been here already. We, didn't know, we, did, we don't have to do anything. Mashiach would be here. Now, I would like to give you the story, and the story is from uh, Esther Abba. This is the book of Esther Rabba, and it's a beautiful story. I will read it in Hebrew, but I'll translate and we'll go through everything. Because I'm going to add things. So this is Esther Rabba. <laughs> and we're going to do it Bezrat Hashem. And we're going to add Rabbi Tzvi Ali Melech Medina of Zchutot Aganalenu with a few things from it, because it's beautiful. And I'm going to give you the, a, a different side of Purim today. Bli Neder Bezrat Hashem. Just I'll find it. You know, I think I need to look. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to accept it. <laughs> I don't want to accept it that maybe I need to. I won't continue. <laughs> so, dear women, let's start. Okay. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> it's like I saw a woman, she was reading Tilly when she, I saw a look at the book and she was putting back and close and I said, you know what, you need glasses. <laughs> <laughs> and then I said, maybe I do need to, I'll tell you, a, 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 because it's really a funny story. I was a, completing something for my daughter for college, and I, could, I didn't know how to complete it totally, so I called, shh, so I called a woman that can help you. You know, they have a resource that can help you, so I called her. So she tells me, she tells me to look at a, a certain page, and she says over there, read what's written over there. I'm looking at the letters, and wow, it's my story. I, can, I want to read, but I cannot. so I said, maybe I'm tired, so I started, you know, rubbing my eyes, I said, maybe I'm tired, I cannot see the letters, and I tell her, you know what, maybe I'm tired, but I cannot see the letters, I cannot read it to you, so she's on the other side of the phone, she tells me, no, she says, you are in denial, you need glasses, <laughs> so I said, this is, <laughs> so let's continue doing Bavira Zot Namshikh. It says, Okay, it says, Ima la Melech Tov, he katev la Avdam. Haman says, from the Megillah, Haman says to Achashverosh, if you feel that it's best, you should write down that we have to kill the Jewish nation. All the Jews that we have in, our, in all 127 uh, countries that we have. So Reish Lakish says, he says, Amar Reish Lakish, B'Sha'a Sh'amar Aman L'Chashverosh, Bo'u Ne'abed Et Yisrael Mela Olam, when, uh, when, Hashverosh, when Aman told the Chashverosh, let's kill all the Jewish people, Reish Lakish says, Amar Lo Chashverosh, Hashverosh tells him, this is an Aramaic. He said, we cannot do that because this is a nation that God is with her. And now I would like to tell you what Haman answered him. So look what, what kind of plot, what kind of things he had in his mind when he answered him. So Haman tells him, dear women, just to make sure I can hold it. 
המן סייז, ואף על פי כן היה המן הרשע מטריד על אחשוורוש, which means he came to him and bothered him all the time. He said, you have to kill those people because they do not listen to you. They, do not, they did not bow to me. And you know why Mordechai did not bow to him? Because Amman Rasha, he wrote on his chest, on his, where his heart is, on his chest, he wrote the name of a, of a different god. And he wrote also on his robe that he had around him a name of a different god. And he said, whoever bows to me, he bows to this God, do you understand? So Haman did not, so Mordechai did not bow to him. But it was more than that. Mordechai said, Bazui ben Bazui. He said, you are a Bazui, which means a person that is not honorable, just like your ancestors. Who is his ancestor, or Haman Arasha? Amalek, who is Amalek? Amalek is the great grandchild of Yitzchak. Amalek is the grandson of Esav. Esav is the brother of Yaakov. We are all family, dear women. So Amalek is the grandchild of Esav Arasha. Esav is the twin brother of Yaakov. It goes back and... Twin? Yes. Esav and Yaakov are twins? Yes. בטח, יסב יצא ראשון, יעקב יצא שני. Twin brother of Yaakov, dear women. So let's continue. So you know, and another thing, another thing that you will remember, just I'm going to remind you, dear women, Mordechai did not, and why did he say Bazui ben Bazui? Why did he say that you do not have honor just like your, your ancestors? Because Esav ביזה את הבכורה. Esav did not want, he make, made fun of being a firstborn. So he said, Ken, he eventually he sold it, but then he said, just like your father, Tabazui, like your ancestors, your Bazui, Bazui Ben Bazui. So he did not bow. It's, you're not honorable like your, and yes. And you know, why did Haman, why Haman got so angry? Because every time he saw Mordechai, Mordechai took his leg, shh. Mordechai took his leg. Let's concentrate so I can give you. I'm, I have a few things to give you today. So I can do it today. I know it's a poor atmosphere. <laughs> and we took pictures and everything. But still, let's concentrate. So when uh, Mordechai used to see Haman, he used to pick up his leg so he can see the, his shoe. You know, oh, the sole of, of the shoe. And once Haman saw it, he got so angry. And you know why? You ask me why? Because there's a story about it. There's a story. There's, there was something written on the sole of the shoe of Mordechai Livriut, Emet. So I would like to tell you the story. It says that Achashverosh told Haman and Mordechai to go on a mission. They were, they, from all of the nations, Haman was chosen and Mordechai was chosen from the Jewish nation, Livriut. Why? Because the, once part of the sages say because they had to go to Jerusalem uh, to uh, Achashverosh to see if Achashverosh will uh, agree to build the temple in Jerusalem. Some say Achashverosh sent them to fight another country. Anyway, the story is the same in both places. They, they went on their way with all of the sources that Achashverosh gave them, dear women. And when he gave them the sources, both of them have, had, the, have, had the same amount of sources. But when they came to the place that they had to go, when they came to the place, like food, money, everything that Achashverosh gave them, both of them had the same amount. Okay? When they came to the place, they were near the place, Achashverosh already, uh, Aman already finished everything that Achashverosh gave him. He did not have money and he did not have food. But Mordechai did because he was wise and he calculated all of his actions in order that he will have enough for all the people that went with him and for himself. So Haman came to him and said, can you please give me part of what you have? And Mordechai said, I cannot give you because I won't have enough for my people. So he begged him again and then Mordechai told him, you know what, I will give you, but on one condition. He said, what is the condition? He said, I want you to, I will write a treaty together, Jose, that, that because I gave you, you are now my slave, and every time you see me, you should bow to me. You are my slave. So they didn't have a piece of paper. They wrote it on the sole of the shoe of Mordechai. 
And every time Haman saw Mordechai, Mordechai picked his shoe <laughs> and showed him the sole of the shoe. So he, every time he got very angry because he remembered that he signed, it was his signature over there, that he is the slave of Mordechai. So he had a lot of anger towards Mordechai, but it's not, we'll, we'll speak about, you know what's the source from where they come from, Mordechai and Haman? Look how everything that we do influences the world years to come. Everything that we do, every choice that we do, even though we think that we're not very important or maybe not, how can we make any difference in the world? But Avraham Avinu was one person, he made a big difference in the world. He calls, he announced the name of God in the whole world. So one person in the whole world, that the whole world was working, worshipping other gods. Shh. Worshipping Shana. Worshipping other gods, dear women. So it's very important, even one thing, even it seems like a small thing, but it has an influence, not only for now, but for generations to come. You know who was Haman? You remember the story about, in the book of Shmuel, the prophet Shmuel? Over there you remember that the Jewish people asked for a king. And God told Shmuel and Avi, and Shmuel and Avi told the prophet Shmuel, said to them, you don't need a king, you have the kings of kings above you. You do not need a king, a human being as a king. But the Jewish people insisted. So God told him, okay, go and make Shaul the king. Shaul was the, from the tribe of Binyamin. This is very important. The tribe of Binyamin. Binyamin was the, the, was the son of Rachel. Look, I'm going back with you. You have to concentrate to go back with me. So Binyamin was the son of Rachel. And Shaul, the king Shaul, he, he was the first king of the Jewish people. He was the, part of the tribe of Binyamin. So he took him and made him a king. With a special oil. Only for kings. He was very righteous. He was tall. He had, you know, the appearance of a king. And he was so good. It's written about him that he was a good person. He was above everybody else. And then the first mitzvah, the first commandment that he, get, that he gets, Shmuel comes and tells him, you have to wipe up Amalek. You have to fight with them and kill all of them, dear women. You have to kill all of the women, all of the men. You have to kill uh, everything that they have, you know, the sheep, the, the cattle, everything. And you are not allowed to touch anything that they have. Okay, so Shaul goes to war with Amalek. And then he pities, listen very carefully, the king of Amalek, Agag. You remember? Aman is called in the Megillah, Haman ben Agag, Hagagi. It's written Agagi. Agag, the king of Amalek then was Agag. His name was Agag, dear women. So he pities him and he pities also the sheep. He does not kill the sheep and the cattle. Son ve bakar. Slicha? You have to understand, maybe you'll think, wow, how God can say such a thing. Dear women, God has mercy, God has mercy over all of the creatures that he has in this world. Even on, on you know, the things that are, do not move, he has mercy. On human beings. But if God said, the, those people, you should destroy, you have to listen to him. So they had mercy. And when Sh God told Shmuel and Avi, the Shmuel the prophet, to go to, to, go to, King, Saul, to go, King Shaul, Slicha, to go to him and to tell him that now he's tearing the kingdom from him. Because he did not listen to him. So Shaul says, but I pitied uh, Agag because of the people. Because of all the people, they pitied the Agag. And also they pitied the sheep and the cattle. He said, you are the king. And what God told you, you should have done. Total, from the beginning till the end. Dear women, because of that, that he did not kill Agag. At that night, the same night, there was a maid servant that came to him to give him food. And she was with him in intimately, and from her came Haman Arasha, dear women. Mm. Do you understand? This is Haman. From her came Haman. And now, who was more... Uh, uh, and nobody asked me, why did he truly pity him? Because I told you he was above every... Spiritually, above all of the children of Israel. Mm. 
So how did he not kill Agag? Because he pitied him because he saw that inside, inside this soul of Agag, the king of Amalek, he saw that there's a soul of a righteous rabbi that is going, the future is going to come from the, his soul. You know, and it's a sparkle. I'll, t I'll show you how Esther Amalka also saw this sparkle. You won't believe it. Listen, dear women. So he saw what kind of sparkle? The sparkle was of Rabbi Shmuel Bar Shila. It's not, wait, I'll wipe the board. It's written Shmuel Bar Shila. Rabbi Shmuel Bar Shilat. Dear women, he, he was a righteous rabbi. It says about him in the Gemara that 13 years, 13 shana, he did not see his backyard at Achatzer Shel Olora because he was teaching children Torah. For 13 years he did not go out of his house, only teaching around the clock, teaching Torah. Shmuel Bar Shilat was the descendant of Haman Arasha. Can you, how can you, can you believe it? How could that be? So, you remember that I told you, don't you remember that we spoke about Dina, the daughter of Yaakov? I, I will show you again. You remember that we spoke about Dina, the daughter of Yaakov? Ma? Tzetza. So, dear women, we spoke about Dina, the daughter of Yaakov. And you remember that Shechem ben Chamor, which means his soul urged for her soul. And this is very weird. And you remember I told you why? Because inside of him there was a sparkle of Rabbi Hanina ben Tardayon. Rabbi Hanina ben Tardayon was part of the soul of a sparkle inside him. Who was Rabbi Hanina ben Tardayon? Rabbi Hanina ben Tardayon was the father of, of, in law of Rabbi Meir Balanes. Can you understand? So how, why? Because God keeps the Holy Spirit. Listen, dear women, the Holy Spirit, all of the big souls inside the klipa, inside, uh, inside the place that look, seems wicked. Why? Because then Satan cannot say, cannot prosecute those souls when they come to this earth. Because he thinks, why? Because then they think, the evil inclination thinks that anyway this soul comes to a ba very bad place. So may anyway this soul won't be good because it, uh, it's, it's surrounded with, ba with bad things. So anyway it it, 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 it kel, which means she, she will be spoiled over there, spiritually spoiled. So that's why they do not prevent those souls to come to this world because they do not even think that from this thing will come a righteous person that will help the Jewish people. הנה, עכשיו הסברתי, הארי ז"ל אומר על זה, שבכוונה הקדוש ברוך הוא מכניס את הנשמות הטהורות לתוך קליפות. בתוך החושך נשמר האור. מתוך החושך יוצא אור. From the darkness come lightness. Why? Even Pharaoh, פרעה, he was searching from Moshe. All over, he was killing the, the boys of Israel, the, Jew, the, the babies, the baby boys. He was killing them only to find Moshe. Only that Moshe was under his nose, on his lap, and he was playing with him on his lap all the time. So look, it's, this is how God protects those souls, the big souls that have a... Yes, um, uh, you know, they have a... Job. A role, a job in, for the Jewish people, they are always, they come out from places that look dark, that look, from darkness comes light. There's a, there's a saying in Hebrew, which means in the tunnel there's always a light. So at the end of the tunnel there's always a light. So dear women, from darkness comes light. So here it's the same thing. But I would like to tell you, why was he called Shmuel Bar Shilat, dear women? And it's written in the Gemara that his children studied Torah in Bnei Brak. <laughs> his descendants studied Torah in Bnei Brak. The descendants of Amman Arasha. And who are the, the descendants? Rabbi Shmuel Bar Shilat. Why was he called Shilat? Because he knew that he is part of Amalek, that he is a descendant from Cain. Amalek comes from the beginning, from Cain. We go back to Esav, and from there to Yitzchak, and from there to the first human being, it goes back to Cain. 
So he says to himself, why did he, he says, how can I, what can I do for Hashem in order to do a fixing for myself? This is a person that understood that this world is a world of our, and the true world is the eternity. Which means, because what happens to us, over here in this world, dear women, we want, to, we want to have satisfaction in this world. We do not truly all the time think about the next world and our, our deeds and what will happen, you know, and the results of our deeds that will happen in the next world. We think we want to have satisfaction now. We want to be happy now. We do not think well, what, what will happen in the next world. Dear women, he thought about the true world. So that's why 13 years he did not go out of his house because he wanted to fix it. How can he fix it? He, st he taught Tinochot uh, Shubat Rabban, children. Why, why does teaching children is a big mitzvah? Because dear women, listen. When Mordechai heard about the decree, he took 22,000 children. You remember I gave you a lecture about the gula, about the salvation? And you remember I told you that the best thing to do is to take children under the age of mitzvot, which means boys under the age of 13 and girls are under the age of 12, to the Kotel, to the Western Wall in Jerusalem, and to make them there, daven tihilim, and to pray to Hashem, and to cry to Hashem. Why? Because those children do not have sins upon them. Their sins go to their parents. They do not have sins. And that's why their prayer is accepted immediately. That's why usually from the beginning when the Jewish people wanted to have rain, they want rain, they called the, the children to pray for rain. They called the children. So this is, the children's prayer is pure. When you see a child pray, even at your house, if you see your children praying, ask for wishes. Say, God, bishut, in the merit of this prayer of my children, Shagia Mashiach, that Bezat Hashem, all the children will get married, the ones that are older. When you see your children pray, ask because there's a tube of prosperity open. It's an hour of will. That's why on Shabbat, for example, I take my, my, my nephew and my niece, I take them around me and I tell them to read Tehillim and I give them points. I say to them, if you read Tehillim, I'll give you this and that. And when we have enough points, we'll go to Toys R Us and we'll buy a, a, a toy or we'll go to Eichel and we'll buy a book. It depends on their age. But you understand? Even one chapter of Tehillim on, from the mouth of a child, a, a small child, is a big thing. If they don't know how to read, you will read and let them repeat after you. Even a small chapter. Do you understand? Even you read and let them repeat. Even one on Shabbat. The, the prayers of children have a lot of power. That's why I told you the Gula. We need to take all of them to the western wall and make them daven over there and teach them Torah. The children, the small children under the age of mitzvot, all of them, girls and boys, to put them separated over there near the Kotel and to let them daven because this is a big merit. Why did he say, why was he called Rabbi Shmuel Bar Shilat? Because the name Shilat it comes from Tehillim. Shiviti Hashem lenegdi tamid. Look, Shiviti Hashem Le Negdi Tamid. He took the name of God. It's in chapter, I think, uh, Ted Zain. It, uh, Ted Zain is uh, 16 in uh, Tehillim. You'll see Shiviti Hashem Le Negdi Tamid. He put the name of God, he concentrated on the name of God in front of him. Uh, so the first letters of each word comes to, you know, you have Yud over here. And Lamed and Taf, you see it's Shilat. It adds to Shilat. You see Shin, Yud, Lamed, Taf is Shilat. Shiviti Hashem and Tamid. That's why he was called Shmuel Bar Shilat. Because he had the name of God in front of him. Why did he have the name of God in front of him? Because God said after the war with Amalek, Kiyad al Kesia milchamal Hashem Amalek midor dor. Which means, God says, my name is not completed because of Amalek. So he wanted, because he was a descendant of Amalek of Haman, he wanted to complete the name of God. So he looked at this, he did Shiviti Hashem and Gita Mid in front of his eyes in order to concentrate on the name of God. Do you know how holy this person was? Teaching small children and, have, and concentrating on the name of God in order to complete the name of God by his actions, by his deeds in this world, in order to merit, in order to uh, elevate the, the, the physical world to the spiritual world. So this is a descendant. Now, Esther Malka was also a prophet. She knew that. 
that inside Haman, so she wanted to awaken the soul of Rabbi Shmuel Bar Shilat inside Haman. So it says over there in the Megillah that, that she uh, invited them for Mishteh, for, uh, for a feast. When she invited him, he was very happy. It's written about Haman, that it's written. So it says, the Midrash says, how can we say about a wicked person that he is happy? How can the Megillah say? Because at that minute, the soul of Rabbi Shmuel Bar Shilat did wake up. So she thought if it will wake up, he will take off the decree. But then when he went out, he saw Mordechai, and he saw the soul of the, uh, the shoe of Mordechai, he was angry again. Mm -hmm. And he went to Achashverosh, dear women. So this is, uh, we, now we know where Haman comes from. So Haman comes, we go back to Yitzchak, and we go back to Cain. But Mordechai, where, where does he come from? Mordechai is part of the tribe of Binyamin. But you won't believe it. You'll, it's, it's unbelievable where he comes from. You remember that I told you the story about King David? Mm -hmm. And you remember about Shimi ben Gera, ben Yemini? Mm -hmm. You remember Shimi ben Gera was part of the family of King Shaul. Okay, part of the tribe of Binyamin. Shimi ben Gera, when he saw David the Melech, he cursed him. Klala nimretzet. That's what's written in the Midrash. Klala nimretzet. And... Avishai ben Surya, the general of David, he told him, don't let this dog speak to you like this. Let me kill him. How dare him? You're a king. So he said, no, God told him to curse me. Do not touch him. Dear women, why did he tell him not to touch him? You know why? Because he saw that one of his descendants is going to be Mordechai. And he has to bring this, this amount, this many children in order that Mordechai will be in this world, dear women. So from Shim'i ben Gera, that cursed King David, Kiyatzai, one of his descendants is, is Mordechai from the tribe of Binyamin. Look how beautiful it is. So what's your point? He didn't want him to be killed. Yes. Okay. Actually, he brought the children that he needs to bring so that he will come Mordechai. And then who was the king? Shaul the king. Shlomo the king. Shlomo the king. Shlomo the king. His son, because Shimi ben Gera was a big rabbi, he knew Torah, he taught the son of the, uh, King David, he taught Sh Shlomo. King Solomon was studying Torah from Shimi ben Gera. The, the King David told him, I know you wise, you'll know when to kill him, when to punish him back. So he told him, meanwhile, you'll study Torah from him. So he was studying Torah from him, so King Solomon told him, this, this is the, con the conditions, there's a one condition. You have to stay in Jerusalem. Once you go out of the city, you are dead. You are not allowed to go out. And once he went out of the city, then they killed him. But until then, he brought all of the children in order that Mordechai, a Yehudi, will go out from them. He will, one, will be one of the descendants. Look how beautiful it is. You see, we are connected. There's no time. There's no, we think that there's time, you know, years we have, um, we have you know, centuries, we think that it, we are not connected, but truly in the f spiritual world, there's no time, there's no space. We, we live in a, in a place of time and space, mugbal, uh, um, limited. In, we live in, a, in the, this physical world and it's limited by time and space, but truly our souls are not limited. And everything that we do, each and every one of you, and, and myself, every, touches the whole world, do you understand? Not only us as Jewish people, not only our, you know, first of all, the cell of the family, you know, the, the family cell, but also the whole Jewish people and also the whole world, the nations, all the nations, the non-Jewish nations and the whole world itself. Everything that we do, dear women. Look how beautiful it is. Uh, Ken. So what you're saying, in other words, Shehaman Rasha and Rabbi Shmuel Bar Shilat are related. כולנו, כן, 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 כולם. המן הרשע related to בעצם של... למי אמרת? רבי שמואל בר שילת הוא אחד מהצאצאים שלו, כן, של המן. הצאצאים של המן למדו תורה בבני ברק, ככה כתוב בגמרא. מי זה הצאצאים? רבי שמואל בר שילת. והוא ידע, כן. שבא מהמלא.
כי הייתה לו נשמה, עוד פעם, הארי ז"ל אומר שהוא מחביא את הניצוצות, אבל את יודעת מה, תביא לי לסיים, אני אסביר את זה עוד פעם. תביא לי רגע לסיים, לפני שאני אשלח מה רוצה להגיד, שאני אתן את זה, רגע. It's not experience, it's a, a, a righteous soul that is inside the clipot. Don't you, I already told you, dear women, shh, and explain it again. Dear women, we had lectures about it. Dear women, the impurity is fed by purity. There's no term of impurity if there's no purity. Do you understand? אין מונח של קדושה, אין מונח של טומאה, אם אין מונח של קדושה. ברור לכם. קודם יש קדושה, אז יכול להיות מושג של אי טהרה, אי קדושה. אבל אין כזה, ששש, אין כזה מונח, אלא אם כן קיים מונח של קדושה. אני יודעת שקצת מאוחר, אבל עוד קצת אפשר? אפשר עוד קצת? אני יודעת שקצת מאוחר. אבל, dear women, do you understand? There's no term of impurity if, a, if, the, if, the, if, the, if the term of, uh, does not exist of purity. If the term of purity does not exist, of holiness does not exist, there's no impurity. אין כזה דבר, פילוסופרלי, אין את זה. You understand? So what happens? The impure, the evil inclination, all of the soldiers cannot exist in this world without being fed by purity. הקדושה מאכילה אותם. So sometimes they have souls, very pure souls inside. They do not want to give them up. So what God, you remember I told you this story. So how does God bring those souls into this world? By bringing them into a place that, that seems impure. But this soul has the ability to clean herself from all of these uh, klipot, do you understand? From all of these shells of impurity. Because it has, that's how they, they feed themselves from this soul. If God will bring this soul in a pure place, then the klipot, the, impure, the impurity, which means the evil inclination, Satan, will prosecute this soul and will uh, tell God, don't bring it over there. Why do you, and they, then, mekatergu alam Yisrael. So instead, God brings it in a, in a, בדרך לא דרך, in a way, in a, not a way, in a, in a, you know, in a kalton, in, in this way, he brings this soul to this world. So the evil inclination thinks, wow, anyway, the soul, for example, for example, shh, the souls of the 12 tribes, how did they come? From the marriage of two sisters. So the evil inclination did not prosecute because they said, well, th this is not a good place because two sisters, it's a, a, you, you, you are not allowed to marry two sisters by the Torah. So this is not a good place. It's okay that the souls will go down there. Mavina, נותנים לנשמה להיכנס למקום שנראה לא טהור. אבל הקדוש ברוך הוא מתוך החושך מוציא את האור. בתוך הדינים יש את האור. In judgment there is mercy. Mercy is judgment. But now we cannot see that because we are limited in our spiritual sight. But Bezrat Hashem Mashiach comes, we will see all the truth. Then we will know that everything that you heard over here is true. <laughs> you will know that everything that we heard, this is the truth. So dear women, the last question that I wanted to give you, first of all, on this part, Ken. Can you repeat again the descendant of, Shmu the descendant of Shmuel Shel Shalit? Shm Shmuel Bar Shilat. He is a descendant of Amman Arasha. Rabbi Shmuel Bar Shilat. Shmuel Bar Shilat is a descendant of Amman Arasha. And who's the next one? After Shmuel Shilat. They are... The children of Shalit. They are righteous people that... I don't know their names. Okay, they are righteous people. All of them were rabbis and righteous. Because this is how he taught them on his... Even though they were from Amalek. Ken! Because this is, a, it's a sparkle of a, of a pure soul that is in the impure, do you understand? This is, a, it's exactly like I told you about the two sisters, Rachel and Leah, that married Yaakov. So the evil inclination cannot prosecute when they come to such a place. And I showed you in the physical world, Pharaoh, he was playing with Moshe Rabbeinu. He had his enemy on his lap. Under his nose all the time. It, it was, God was sitting up there and laughing because he was searching, but he, all the time he was around him. The person that will ruin him, he raised him. Betocha klipa, in the impure, in the middle, you know, bamash, betocha klipa, inside the impurity he was living. So this is how God does things. This is by the Ariza Zchutot Aganalenu. Now the question true now is, why from the tribe of Binyamin? Shh. Why from the tribe of Binyamin? 
Why do the, the if you look for, through the Jewish history, wait, I'll show it over here. Look, it's written, uh, can I wipe the board here? Okay, shh, please be quiet so I can concentrate. If you have questions at the end of the lesson, we'll answer them. It's written at Parashat Kitetzei in Chumash Dvarim. It's written by Yomer Hashem El Moshe. God told Moshe, Ktov, write down, Macho Em Chet Zechar Amalek. I am going to wipe the, the memory of Amalek from earth. Macho Em Chet. You see, it's a kefel ashon mamash. Macho Em Chet. It's... Ech amun kefel ashon b'anglit? Shachachti? Livriyut. Double meaning? No double meaning. It's kefel ashon. It's like using the same word twice. The, it's like using the words twice that I'm going to wipe the memory even of, of, of Amalek it says in our Torah a beautiful it says in our Torah it says in our Torah that the word shows us in a hint okay, all of the people that are going to be participating through the beginning of the creation until the end until Mashiach comes, until the beginning of the seventh Aleph uh, Ashvit, the, the 7,000 uh, year, okay? It will show us all of the people that are going to wipe Amalek, that will fight with Amalek. So the first ones who fought Amalek were Moshe Rabbeinu and Aaron, Nachon? You remember because when the Jewish people went out of Egypt, they were the ones that fought against Amalek. So it was Aaron. Aleph stands for Aaron, okay, Aaron, this is the Aleph, Mem stands for Moshe, Ken, Nilchamu Ba'amalek Shiatsa, Chet stands for Chur, the son, you remember Chur? Aaron and Chur were holding the hands of Moshe Rabbeinu, he was sitting on a stone, Chur is the son of Miriam Anevia, Miriam the prophet, the sister of, our, of Moshe. Aaron is the brother of Moshe. Chur, you remember him? He was the son of Kalev ben Yefune and Miriam. Look how beautiful everything is connected. And then what helped them? The He is the Shechina. It's Shem Hashem, okay? This is the Shechina that helped them. This is the first war against Amalek. What was the second war after that? The second war against Amalek was now Purim. Look, it was Esther. Esther, you see the Aleph? The Mem is Mordechai. And the Chet is Harbona. You remember in the Megillah, it's written, Gam Harbona, Zachur Letov. And the Hey again is the Shechina. It's the name of God that helped us to fight them. Look how beautiful it is. And when Mashiach comes, it will be Eliyahu Navi. The Aleph stands for Eliyahu. I'm going to talk about it. Aleph stands for Eliyahu, a Navi. Mem stands for Mashiach. And Chet stands for Chet Malche Edom. The eight nations of Edom, the eight kings of Edom that will come against the children of Israel. And the Hey again is the Shechina that will help the children of Israel, Mashiach. T to fight Amalek, dear women. Wow. Akshav, I would like to tell you, look how beautiful it is. This is all we can see. This is from when we went out of Egypt and it, oh, Mashiach was almost here. Okay? And then we have Esther and Mordechai. Also, it's a time that there's, there's a gate open for Mashiach and this is at the end of days, which means Biata Mashiach which we are just now, mamash dorchim beze, we are inside those days. We are the generation of Mashiach. So look over here, we can see the three of them, Eliyahu, Navi, and Mashiach, and we can see, um, Talia asked me about Charbona. Charbona, Zachur Letov. Who do we use this Zachur Letov? For what rabbi? Eliyahu, Navi, the prophet Eliyahu. We say Eliyahu, Navi, Zachur Letov. Who was Charbona? Charbona was one of the... Uh, king's uh, helpers, and when and uh, when King Achashverosh thought to kill Haman, he said, "Listen, Haman prepared a tree for Mordechai to hang him on the tree. You can use this tree to hang Haman." Yeah. This was Charbona, and it's written in Charbona Zachur Latov. You want a, sto a story about it? We we learn from Tomer Dvorah. Uh, uh, the last lessons we also mentioned Agarach Mivolojin. 
הגרח מוולוז'ין זה רבי חיים מוולוז'ין, זכותו תגן עלינו, and he was one of the students of the גרה, the גאון מווילנה, זכותו תגן עלינו. And נפש החיים, we speak sometimes about his book, because a part of the things that I give you is also part of his book, של הגרח מוולוז'ין. So there's a beautiful story about him. It's, uh, he says, he couldn't understand why, why it's written about חרבנה, וחרבנה זכור לטוב. And here's a parable, beautiful thing, by, by Rabbi Agarach Mivolojin. He says that he, it was known that he used to eat something or to drink something only if a person was next to him to answer Amen. Otherwise he won't eat and not drink. So one night, one night he was sitting and studying and everybody fell asleep. So he wanted to drink, he felt so thirsty, he wanted to drink, he could not drink because nobody was there. He said, God help me, I want to drink. He felt, you know, you want to study, but you, can, you feel the thirst in you. And he wanted to say, Shakol. So he was, he was continuing to study, and then he, he heard, and it was like 2, 3 o'clock at night, he heard a knock on his door. <laughs> Somebody's knocking on the door. He opened the door, he saw one of, this, of his scholars, his students from the yeshiva. Oh. So he said, come in. He says, I'm sorry, Rabbi, I came now because I have a question. I was studying, and I had to ask you the question. I'm very sorry that I'm bothering you. He said, no, I'm so happy, come. He takes the cup, he says, but first, I want you to answer Amen. So he blesses Shakol, the student answers Amen. He, Garach uh, Mivolojin is very happy, he says, thank you, God. And this, uh, the student comes, he's happy, he heard the answer, he goes back. Okay, the next morning, he, the next day, he goes to the Yeshiva, the Garach Mivolojin, and he sees the student and he says, you know, you did a big mitzvah yes, last night because I couldn't drink and thank you for being there. The student is looking at him and he, he feels embarrassed. He says, Rabbi, I wasn't at your house. He said, but you came to my house at around approximately 2.30 a.m. You knocked on my door and door. I saw you, we spoke. He says, Rabbi, I wasn't there. I was asleep. You can ask my wife. I didn't go out of the house. I was at home. So the Garach Mivolojin goes to the Gerah, the Gaon Mevilna, and he tells him, Rabbi Eliyahu, Zchutot Agen Alenu, and he tells him, you know, this and this happened to me. He tells him the story. So the Gerah, the Gaon Mevilna tells him, you have to understand, this wasn't your student. It was Eliyahu Navi that came to you because you wanted so much to bless Eliyahu Navi came to you in his figure. So from there on, he honored this student. And you'll ask me why? Because he said, if Eliyahu Navi felt that he can go in his figure, in this student's figure, it means that he's very righteous, that in the spiritual world he has a very high place. Otherwise, Eliyahu Navi won't come in his figure. Now, what I told you, Charbonah, it says about him in the Megillah, Zachur Letov, which means it says, the Garach Mevolosian says, now I understand if the Charbonah, if Eliyahu Anivi, and it says that Eliyahu Anivi came as Charbonah, as the image of Charbonah, and he told Hashverosh that there's a tree hanging 50 feet outside that he prepared for Mordechai, put him on, hang him on this tree. So he said, if he came in his figures, it means that this Charbonah has merit. So that's why it's written, the Charbonah Zachur Latov, ki hu natan, hu natan ta'etza, he gave the idea to hang Haman on the tree that was prepared for Mordechai. Venafohu, everything was exactly what he prepared for for Am Israel, the children of Israel. He received himself. He, he received himself. So this is the connection between Esther, Mordechai, and Charbonah. Look how beautiful it is. I just wanted to ask Ken. Uh, somebody who said that uh, Mordechai and uh, Esther, Mordechai, they were malachim because there is nothing. After them. Angel, angel. Yeah. It, 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 does say, it does say that they were, they were very special people because Esther Malka wasn't surely all the time with the Achashverosh. There was a Shada, a demon that looked like her that went to Achashverosh, dear women. But this is part of the Pardes of the Torah. And I won't go into it, but I would like to tell you, dear women, I would like just to show you the children of the tribe of Binyamin, the children of, the, of Rachel, are the only ones that can get rid of Amalek in this world. And why? Because I told you that Amalek is the grandchild of Esav. And you know why Amalek hates? 
the children of Israel, the children of Jacob. You know, Israel is the name of Jacob, the higher myth. I have to tell you, it's because of Timna. Who is Timna? I'm giving you things that you usually won't listen. <laughs> you know who's Timna? Timna is the mistress of Esav. Timna, uh, Timna is the mistress of oh, Esav, sorry. Timna is the mistress of Eliphaz. Eliphaz is the son of Esav. Eliphaz had wives. And one of his mistresses was Timna. Timna Yaldait Amalek. She was one of his mistresses. In Bereshit, it's written. I'll, show, I'll give it to you in just a minute. It's written. I wrote it down from. It's written in Parashat Kitetse. Listen, it's, it, in order that you'll understand, please pay attention. We'll go back because now we, we had a journey. We had a journey, dear women, from all, all the generations. Did you feel the journey? We went back in time and forth in time until Mashiach. Mineret Azman, exactly, the tunnel of time. We went through the Now let's go to the, through, shh. We'll go through the tunnel of time. And we'll see who is Timna and why was she so angry with Jacob, with Yaakov Avinu, our forefather. Why was she so angry? Because she wanted him and he didn't want her. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. The whole thing, this is from the beginning. <laughs> this is from dear women, it's from the beginning. Timna wanted to get married to Yaakov Avinu. She wanted to marry Yaakov and Yaakov did not want to marry her because she was not a pure person. So she became the mistress of Eliphaz. You remember Eliphaz ran after Yaakov Avinu because his father sent him to kill him, you remember. So she became a mistress. Avali, but she was so angry. How did... Huh? Aben shel Esav. Elisav. I told you we're going through the tunnel of time. So, dear women, she wanted Yaakov very much. She loved him. He was beautiful. I, we cannot blame her. He was wise. He was pure. She wanted to have his children. But Yaakov Avinu did not want to marry her, dear women. And because of that, that he did not want to marry her, she became the mistress of Eliphaz. And because she came the mistress, she born, she gave a child, she gave birth to a child who was called Amalek. Dear women, the Pilegesh, the Pilegesh, lo ishto. Why do I tell you this? Because it's written in Bereshit. It's in for a few minutes. Let me give you the connection. Itzchak, Itzchak is the father of Esav. Itzchak, Yaakov, Yaakov, because Timna again. I will, uh, let me show you over here. Okay, shh. Wait, wait. <laughs> oh, sorry. Look over here. Again, shh. I know it's a little bit, you have to. Okay, we have Yitzchak. Okay. <laughs> okay, we have Kain, okay? אחר כך יש לנו יצחק, אוקיי? מיצחק אנחנו רואים שיוצא יעקב ועשיו. עשיו יש לו את אליפז. אליפז, עשיו, I'm speaking in Hebrew, sorry. Okay, we have יצחק, his sons, the twin sons are יעקב and עשיו. Esav has a son called Eliphaz, okay? Yaakov has been Yamin, one of the 12 tribes. Eliphaz has, gets married to Timna, she, no, he does not get married, she's his mistress, to Timna Yapilegesh, okay? Eliphaz Pilegesh, Timna, his mistress is Timna, and from her comes Amalek, which means that Amalek is the grandchild of Yitzchak, the great grandchild, Juanin Shel Yitzchak, and he's the gra the gra the grandchild of Esav. Okay, do you understand? This is Amalek. Why? Because Timna wanted to get married to Yaakov, and Yaakov did not want to marry her. Okay, he did not want to marry her. She was very angry. You know, woman, that her pride was hurt because she loved someone and, she, and he did not want to marry her. She so she told her son Amalek to take revenge. Whose daughter she was? She, I don't know exactly whose daughter she was, but it's written Timna. It's written in Bereshit. It's written in Bereshit. You can go to Bereshit and over there you'll find it. 
In Bereshit, I'll give you here. It's written shh in Bereshit, and in Bereshit it's written Vayish v'timna pilegesh lelifaz in 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 Parashat Vayishlach in Bereshit. Find it over there. You'll find the descendants of backwards of Timna. V'timna timna pilegesh lelifaz ben Esav v'teled lelifaz et Amalek. So, dear women, it says, if maybe some of you will ask me, because in Parashat, this is in Parashat Vayishlach Bebereshit. In time, I went to Kitetse in Chumash Dvarim. I couldn't bring, I didn't bring everything because I need to open and find it, so I wrote it over here. So, dear women, it's written in, in, Chumash, in Parashat Kitetse, in the portion of Kitetse, on Chumash Dvarim, it's written, Lot et edomi ki achi chau. It says, you are not allowed to hate Edomi because he is your brother. Who is Edomi? Esav. The nations. You are not allowed to hate them because they are your brother, because Esav is the brother of Yaakov. So, and then it says in the same portion that You have to get rid of the memory of Amalek under the heaven. So how come Amalek is the descendant of Esav? He is, the, he is his grandchild. So how, how those, those, those two sentences sit together in the, same, in the same portion even, not in different portions. We're not supposed to hate them and other ones. And, and meanwhile, we have to get rid of Amalek from this world. So dear women, why? Because Amalek was the son of a mistress. He wasn't the son of the wife. So Ilan Yochasim Shelo Ulo Oto Davar. You understand? He wasn't the son of a wife that it was by marriage. He was the son of a mistress. That's why machot imchet zachar malek mitachat hashamayim. That's why you're allowed. It's a different thing. Now I would like to tell you, dear women. So it's not mamzer, ki mamzer by definition is when a married woman goes with, a, with another man and brings a child for her husband. Okay. That is not his. This is mamzer. Okay. But this, the, this is only not legal. But okay. Esau, so it means that we have to be good with Esau? You have to, unless he come, come lor gerchash, come lor go. It says that you have to greet every person with hello, even the nations. It doesn't matter. Every person, because you should have mercy over everybody. But there's halacha, the Esav sonele Yaakov, which means Esav hates Yaakov, and if he wants to kill you, hakam lor gechash kem lor go. You have permission, ma? Lagit shalom. But meanwhile, I didn't answer. I wanted to answer. A question. So you saw that Timna told her son to revenge, to have revenge on the children of Yaakov because he did not want her. Dear women. Why the tribe of Binyamin? Why can we see that always Yoshua was fighting because Moshe Rabbeinu, the son of Leah, Moshe Rabbeinu is part of the tribe of Levi, which are the sons of Leah. He told Yoshua to fight Amalek. Yoshua was the one to fight them, okay? I, I, all the time when we see, when we look, I, I wiped it out, but you can see that every time we can see that... Ma? Which tribe Moshe belongs? Levi, 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 from Leah. And we can see that Mordechai and Esther are also from the tribe of Binyamin. And why? Because, and you remember that Mordechai tells Esther that if you will not do what you need to do now, you will be, God will get rid of you and all of your house, all of your family. God is going to help the children of Israel in a different way. But if you won't do what you need to do and help the children of Israel, there will be a salvation for the Jewish people from a different way, but you will not have a fixing. Why? Because she was part of Shaul Amelech, the King Shaul. And because she was part of King Shaul, she was doing the fixing of King Shaul that did not kill Agag. And Haman was Agagi. So she was part of the fixing of Agag. But dear women, the last... Ma? Esther Amalka, the Queen Esther. So dear women, look at Binyamin. Why the tribe of Binyamin? Because the tribe of Binyamin did not bow to Esav. You remember that when Yaakov Avinu came with his sons back to the land of Israel, to Canaan, to see his father, Esav was waiting for him. And they all bowed seven times to Esav. 
except for Binyamin. Now you know that they bowed, it seemed like they are bowing to Esau, but they did not bow to Esau because the Shekhinah was walking in front of them. So they bowed to the Shekhinah. <coughs> so dear women, Binyamin was still in the womb of his mother, of Rachel. You remember what happened? Yosef went in front of her in order that she will not get panicked for when, she, when she sees a son she will have a miscarriage. So Binyamin wasn't even born. So he did not bow to Esav. That's why Binyamin has the merit to fight Amalek. That's why we have Mashiach ben Yosef, dear women. Mashiach ben Yosef nilcham im Amalek, dear women. Mashiach ben Yosef, הכוונה היא שהוא נמצא מהילדים של רחל. מבינה? שזה מגיע מהילדים של רחל. That's why we have two משיחים, dear women. So why? Because the tribe of Yehuda, the tribe of the children of Leah, are the ones that give the orders to fight Amalek. But the ones that can, can win the fight with Amalek is the children of Rachel, Rachel's children. So with these words, Bezrat Hashem, Shagi Amashiach Tzitkenu Bimera Biyameinu Amen. Shagi Amavasar Eliyahu Navi Zachur Latov. Olam Iparad Adam Mechavor Bidvar Alachai Achid Barabim Alachak Erabim. God bless.